Volunteers fighting against Russia are of critical importance in the war between Ukraine and Russia. The Ukrainian Foreign Legion is mostly filled with those who hold the fight for peace, philosophy of hatred or hostility towards Russia. In this regard, some ethnic groups fighting against the Russian army in Ukraine's elite Foreign Legion draw a lot of attention. These appear as Russians, Belarusians, Chechens, Georgians and Turks. Many professional and powerful associations continue to be formed in the ranks of Ukraine. The last of these comes from the Turks, who are considered to be one of the leaders in the history of war. While Russia's military intervention in Ukraine continues, many mercenaries from all over the world continue to fight in the ranks of the Ukrainian army in the international legions whose establishment was announced in March. In recent months, it has been announced that a new structure called the Turin Battalion has been established, which will include militias from the Turkic republics in Central Asia. So what is known about the unit created for the Turks to fight in Ukraine? Volunteers from the Turkic world are fighting against Russia with a nationwide resistance of the Ukrainian army and people. It continues to receive support from many countries. Many Chechens, especially in Europe, announced that they would join the Ukrainian army. Later, it was reported that a battalion of Turkish ethnic nationalities will fight in the ranks of the Ukrainian army against the Russian occupation forces. A citizen of Kyrgyzstan named Almaz Tabakoglu announced that a unit was formed for the citizens of Turkish states to fight in the ranks of Ukraine. The Turin Battalion The Turin Battalion has recently become one of the striking elements of the Ukraine-Russia war, with a video posted by the people who joined the battalion, which is thought to have been established under the leadership of Kutabako Glue. So what is known about the Turin Battalion? Let's look at the details together. Almaz Tabako Glue claims that Russian President Vladimir Putin committed genocide against the Turkish peoples. Kutabakala Glue is on the agenda with the statements that he will overthrow the evil administration of Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov and the imperialist regime of Putin. The warriors are shouting the slogans of Long Live Turin in Turkish, accompanied by the Grey Wolf sign. Kutabako Glue, who made statements to the Kazakh press in the past weeks, thinks that Russia will not be content with Ukraine. He argues that if Putin is successful in Ukraine, Russia will attack Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Kutabako Glue says that this is why the Turin Battalion was established and that they are fighting against Russia in the Ukrainian ranks. It is estimated that 350 people have joined the Turin Battalion. So far, it is stated that these people are mostly citizens of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Azerbaijan, and there are also participants from the Uyghur region of China to the battalion. In addition, it is claimed that Jocelyn Dushambon, who came to the agenda with the videos he shared on social media and called himself Kazakh Rambo, also joined the battalion. However, According to the information received from the Kyrgyzstan embassy in Ukraine, it is known that Kyrgyzstan had reached Quebec Oglu before and called for him to return to his country. Despite this, it is stated that Kudo Oglu refused this call and continued to fight. It is also stated that Kudo Oglu worked as a barber in Kiev before the war and was involved in the war last May and joined the regional defense units. According to Kyrgyz law, Kyrgyz citizens are prohibited from participating in wars or conflicts in foreign countries. Those who violate this prohibition are expected to be punished with imprisonment between five and eight years. Also, Azerbaijani mercenary Magam Jafarov declared that he would establish a Turkish legion to fight against Russia. Jafarov informed that there will be militias from Azeris, Turks, Crimean Tatars, Uzbeks and other Turkic republics within the unit. Even before President Zelensky of Ukraine announced the establishment of the international legions in March and invited mercenaries from all over the world to the country, it was known that many foreign militants participated in the conflicts with the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, which declared their independence unilaterally. Volunteers are taking revenge on Russia by fighting for Ukraine. There is a growing hatred for Russia. Day by day, Russia also had to endure a massive military setback, 
unprecedented sanctions and a series of international condemnations to describe such a series of difficulties and sustained failures as success can only be called propaganda, hypocrisy or even self-deception. The Ukrainian war has already begun to shape alliances around the world. Moreover, the outcome of the Ukraine war and how Russia will come out of it. It will also be the answer to whether the Western hegemony will end, whether the world will transition to a bipolar order, and whether the Cool War, which describes an order in which blocks exist but is not separated by very rigid lines, will be. Again, therefore, the start of the Ukraine war triggered other geopolitical fault lines in the world. For Russia, Ukraine is both a matter of identity and existence, and the answer to whether it can become a great power in the international system. According to Russia, which has the great power syndrome, Russia has to be an empire and an imperial power. It is a prevailing opinion, especially among Russian conservatives and Eurasianists, that Russia will shrink otherwise and that Russia's transformation into a nation-state will mean that Russia loses all its claims and turns into an ordinary Slavic state. When we look at Russia's current foreign policy, we can easily see that the political elites who rule Russia and Putin also have this idea. In short, the Ukrainian issue is a question of whether Russia can become a great power in the world. Since the war began, Putin, Lavrov and Medvedev claimed that this war is against US hegemony and that the world is no longer unipolar. In February 2022, the most shocking event of the last period began when Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the launch of a military operation against Ukraine. Thousands of people have lost their lives and thousands of people have been injured in the war that took place before the eyes of the whole world. However, many cities, especially those belonging to Ukraine, were severely damaged. The West and America imposed heavy economic and social sanctions on Russia. However, none of them were enough to push Putin back. Russia's attempt to invade Ukraine was different from the scenario written before the conflict. Russia failed to seize the stipulated territory. It was partially tied up by international pressure and sanctions. In short, the most striking war in recent history is between Russia and Ukraine. Despite all this, one of the most curious questions is, is peace possible in Ukraine in 2023? The war is about to leave behind almost an entire year. Although both sides suffered great losses, they could not gain the upper hand and the war was delayed until 2023. In fact, clashes continue along the border intensely. The longer the war dragged on, the harder it was to establish peace and stability as human and material losses increase. It seems that it will not be easy for the parties to take a step back. The Ukrainian authorities demand that Russia withdraw from all lost territories, including Crimea, pay war reparations and be guaranteed not to attack again. Even Russia's withdrawal from Crimea, not from the new regions it added to its territory at the end of 2022, will cause a loss of prestige in the international arena, and the Russian authorities will not be able to explain this to their own people. Therefore, it is not expected that Russia will withdraw from these places. In order to achieve peace, the parties have to take steps back. However, neither side agrees to this yet. There has even been talk on the agenda that the conflicts between the two countries may intensify after March and spread to other countries. Vladimir Putin made a great mobilization decision for the continuation of this war and the soldiers recruited with this mobilization decision continued to be sent to the Ukrainian border. However, this remedy found by the Russian president often results in the deportation of recruits to the front and their destruction by the mighty attacks of the Ukrainian armed forces. On the other hand, with the start of the Russia-Ukraine war and Russia's complete break with the West, Russia started to get closer with China and Iran. It was as if the bloc of those who challenged the West and those who were excluded from the West began to form between Russia, China and Iran. After the US President Biden's Middle East tour, the Tehran summit, held on July 19 with the participation of Putin, Erdogan and the Iranian president, and Putin's messages from Tehran show that bipolarity has begun to emerge in the Middle East. 
the Russia-Iran-Syria block against the USA, Israel-Saudi Arabia block the Russia-Ukraine war enabled the United States to reconsolidate its power over Europe and NATO, which until a few years ago, French President Macron called brain dead, found a reason for existence. Again, with the Russia-Ukraine war, the Western Pole again tightened its ranks. However, we can say that Germany has lost the initiative at this pole. For this reason, the Russia-Ukraine war will also be the answer to whether the world was switched to bipolarity, whether the cool war will begin, and whether the liberal paradigm and Western influence in world politics will be broken. States can be buried in history, but can a state's history be buried underwater? Russia, in the throes of war, is surrounded by oceans. That's why Russia attaches great importance to its navy. The Russian government claimed to have the most powerful navy in the world. But the war in Ukraine proved the Russian government wrong. And how did this happen? Land and air armies are involved in the war between Russia and Ukraine. This is because there is a very long land border between the two countries. The Russian army had planned to send the ground army to invade Ukraine. However, thanks to the historic resistance of the Ukrainian army, the Russian army suffered a heavy defeat in ground operations. Russian commanders were then forced to try new tactics. Russia and Ukraine are bordering the Black Sea. The Russian army has also deployed the navy to operate in the south. The Russian navy in Crimea set out to bomb Ukrainian ports, but the Ukrainian army was prepared for this operation as a result of the shells fired at Russian ships. The Russian Navy suffered heavy damage. Many Russian ships were sunk, the Russian ships that returned to the Crimean harbor. But this move did not save the Russian ships. The Ukrainian army came up with a plan to destroy the Russian ships anchored in the Crimean harbor. Ukrainian army troops flew to this harbor. Ships in the harbor were hit by drones. Ships damaged by drone shells began to sink. The port was also hit during this bombardment. The Crimean harbor caught fire. Russian naval officers tried to save the sinking ships, but without success. They evacuated the Crimean port to prevent other ships from being affected by the fire. As a result of successful operations of the Ukrainian army, 18 warships of the Russian Navy were destroyed. Warships are among the most expensive and largest equipment of armies. A warship is equipped with the most advanced weapons missile systems, specialized military software and a large number of ammunition. As a result of the sinking of the Russian ships, these munitions also sank into the sea. As a result of the sinking of these ships, the Russian military is thought to have lost billions of dollars. Having lost its most powerful ships, Russia realized that it could not continue the naval war in the Black Sea. Moreover, the Russian government does not have the power to buy new ships to replace the sunken ones. The Russian economy has been badly damaged by this war. That's why Russia cannot renew its navy. In this situation, Russian commanders have two options in the Black Sea. The first option is to give up naval warfare altogether. Russian commanders want to implement this decision, but Putin does not allow it. Putin is very adamant about this after the failures of the land army. He thinks that the Russian Navy must bomb Ukraine. That's why Russian commanders cannot give up naval warfare. There is only one option left. This option is to bring all the ships of the Russian Navy to the Ukrainian harbor. But this is very difficult and costly. Many of the ports of Russia's military ships are located are completely frozen. The north of Russia is very close to the poles. The ports in these regions are unusable. Most of the year, the Russian Navy is usually waiting in eastern ports because the east of Russia is closer to the United States. Some Russian ships are also in the Baltic Sea. These ships are kept in this area against NATO members in Europe. Ships from Russia's eastern ports have to go all the way around the Asian continent to get to the Black Sea. Russia also thinks that this would create a huge security gap in the east. That's why it is being very cowardly about it. Russia has so far sent only two warships from these ports, but these ships could not reach the Black Sea much closer to the Black Sea. Russia has warships in the Baltic Sea, 
But the Baltic Sea is turning into a hell for Russia. After the applications of Sweden and Finland, the Baltic Sea has become a NATO lake. Russian warships are afraid to pass through the Baltic. If Russian warships manage to pass through this sea, they will have to go around the entire European continent. All these countries are NATO members. Russia cannot send these ships to the Black Sea because it is afraid of NATO members. There is another reason why Russia cannot send ships to the Black Sea. As you know, the only access road to the Black Sea is located in Turkey. In order to reach the Black Sea, it is necessary to pass through the Dardanelles and Istanbul Straits. But Turkey, as a NATO member, will never allow Russian warships to pass through these straits. Russia has no presence at sea against NATO. This is leading to a major defeat for the Russian Navy in the Black Sea. At the moment, no commander of the Russian Navy dares to report to Putin about this. However, it is no longer possible for Russian Navy ships to carry out operations against Ukraine. There is another development that frightens Russian commanders. USS Nitsi, one of the most powerful warships of the US anchored in the Bosphorus Strait, and the whole world was surprised by this gigantic ship sailing into the Black Sea. Moreover, the US ambassador to Turkey, Jeffrey Fleet, visited the ship and met with all the soldiers. It was claimed that this ship was going to sail to Crimea after receiving some NATO weapons in Turkey. But in the meantime, there was a huge earthquake in Turkey, after which a state of emergency was declared in Turkey and a lot of work was stopped. This earthquake happened in southern Turkey. The earthquake occurred in the city of Karaman Maras and was felt in 10 cities. One of the cities is Adana. Adana is home to one of the biggest NATO bases. The NATO base in Adana is one of the biggest threats for Russia because the planes taking off from this base have a very close range to bomb Moscow. Russia is very afraid of the presence of this base. An earthquake around the NATO base took everyone by surprise when the US ship arrived in Turkey. Russian submarines are known to conduct many seismic surveys and secret projects in the Black Sea. Some sources in the Turkish press claim that Russian submarines in the Black Sea are energizing fault lines using nuclear energy. According to earthquake experts, external interventions can also be made to cause an energy explosion in fault lines. It is thought that Russia is using nuclear energy to cause these fault lines to break. But there is no concrete information on this yet. The statements made by a deputy in Russia surprised everyone. Duma deputy Yevgeny Fedorov made an interesting statement on this issue. Federal said that he suspected that this earthquake was artificial. Fedorov's statements were almost like a confession for Russia. Immediately after the earthquake, Turkish warships started to carry out many investigations in the Black Sea. However, no concrete evidence has been found so far. It is claimed that the CIA is also conducting a research on this issue. NATO bases in Turkey were not destroyed in this earthquake. According to investigations at a NATO base in Adana, these buildings are still intact. The weapons in the bases are expected to be loaded onto the US ship as soon as possible. After this loading, the U.S. warship can go on an operation to destroy the Russian Navy. The whole world is wondering about the U.S. plan. What do you think about the heavy defeat of the Russian Navy? Do you think the Baltic Sea countries will join NATO? What do you think about Russia's military presence in the Black Sea? What do you think the U.S. ship in Istanbul will do? Do you think the earthquake in Turkey could have been caused by Russia?